five stars we have. Your next Coke could be your ticket to the good times. Grab a bottle, sip, and scan the QR code in store or on Coke Kamini and unlock cool music experiences. Coke Studios back with real magic. Up next. Brought to you by Rock Boom, now in a new bottle with the same taste and same positive energy. Available in a 320 ml PET bottle. Rock Boom, feel the positive energy. Well, that is all we had for you tonight for Live at Nine. My name is Sheila Tim, and of course, it's Thursday, so it's definitely a frontline. Charles, I want to know if you attended the last UB40 concert in 2008, but also what is coming up tonight on Frontline? Uh, Sheila, I am looking forward to attending uh, UB40 when they return to Kampala in December, so uh, we, we can't be walking back into history, but. The, the history of UB40 is quite well known throughout the world and uh, they have entertained, they have excited the world. And we thought when they last came to Kampala, that was their last concert. So it's such a major event that they're returning to Kampala. And uh, on the front line tonight, we are shining the torch on the 11th Parliament of Uganda, but Parliament broadly, discussing how the honorable members have been conducting themselves, some people say, dishonorably some others say that sometimes they venture into issues that they shouldn't be uh, spending so much time on uh, but we'll have people who work in parliament who have served in parliament to help us understand uh, what exactly is the behavior that's going on and what it means uh, for legislation and for democracy in the country Frontline. It has been some time since we're treated to scenes of the honorable members of parliament throwing jabs, kicks, and slaps. And now they are back, bigger and better. It was a second day of the opposition MPs protesting in the house, and the speaker was having none. I'm going to suspend the house for 10 minutes. For 10 minutes, I'm going to spend the house for 10 minutes, and then, and then when I come back, I want to take some action as a presiding officer of this house. Despite Right Honorable Tayewa's tough new rules of engagement aimed at restoring sanity and decorum in the House, the leader of the opposition and his are not ready to back down. It's not simply a flat statement. It must be three ingredients. Devoid of those, we shall reject it and then shall communicate further action. Are the concerns of the opposition legitimate or are they just attempting to cover up an unruly party member's abusive conduct towards women? Is this a well-calculated political maneuver to suffocate any discussion in parliament? With the events that are happening and the kind of chaos that we see in parliament, uh, I believe that uh, they, they are headed uh, in a wrong direction. Uh, because we see that increasingly they are, they are discussing issues that uh, many people among the public don't find very relevant uh, to their own cause. Well, I mean, we were probably better off without a parliament in, 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 in many respects. The, 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 as I said, even the leaders themselves, right, the, 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 the speakers, Sometimes a lot of time has been spent on personal issues of the speaker and other individuals. The, the censoring of uh, this uh, minister, Namugans, was a personal issue. This is The Frontline.
एस फ्रॉम लाइन चार्ल्स मांगू श्याम पागे Tonight we shine the torch on the Parliament of Uganda, particularly the 11th Parliament of Uganda. We have seen a lot of dramatic scenes. Some of the questions being asked are: Is this unique to Uganda's Parliament? Does it mean anything? What does it mean? And so many other questions. But uh, as I introduce my panel tonight, we have a brief moment to comment about the recent incident in uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park, where three people were murdered. Uh, by some um, still unknown people have seen uh, Islamic State climbing responsibility and the, the police said these were suspected Eddie Frebos. But what does this mean to the tourism sector? What does this mean to security in the country and Uganda's image internationally? Let me introduce the guests that I have in studio tonight, starting from the extreme end. My colleague, we used to sit next to one another and uh, Director of Communications and public relations at the Parliament of the Republic of Uganda, Mr. Chris Obori. Very nice to have you, sir. Thank you, Judge. Oh. Uh, your neighbor is my boss. Huh? In the newsroom, we're the neighbors here. Yes. Your neighbor now is my boss. Yeah, and your neighbor is your boss there. And my neighbor is my boss. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> surrounded by my bosses. Well, it's very <laughs> She's my former boss. Yes. yes. Very nice to have you, Chris. Uh, we have uh, from Butambala, the Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi, also from the National Inter Platform. He was um, acting leader of opposition not very long ago. <laughs> very nice to have you, Honorable Mwanga Chivumbi. For two hours. Only. For two hours. <laughs> For two hours only. Very nice to have you. Uh, nice to be here once again. And. Um, uh, to our dear listeners, wish you a good, a good time. Uh, the next guest is a uh, senior citizen, Dr. Miria Kovronga Matembe. Uh, no need for other, any, any, any other qualifiers on that. Very nice to have you, Dr. Matembe. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. And from Ndorwa Constituency West, Chairman of the National Resistance Movement in Kabale District and Minister of State in charge of industry. The Honorable David Bahati, very nice to have you, sir. Thank you, Charis, and thank you, viewers. And, and Ogore said his boss. Yes, yes. He's okay. right. Yes. Um, we're starting this show uh, with sad news. Earlier today, uh, the nation came to learn about the passing on of uh, Henry Chamber at 84 years. Henry Chamber wrote uh, one of the most significant books, A State of Blood, uh, and I was doing a, count, a check. He was permanent secretary, I think, before he made 33. And then uh, President Idi Amin fired the ministers. And when he called to inquire who was his new boss, he was told, you are the minister. Uh, one of those interviews he gave uh, before he, I, I mean, in, uh, when, when I think he was actually 82 years uh, old, that's when he passed on that information. So we extend our condolences uh, to the family. Uh, uh, Mr. Henry Chamber passed on earlier today. Uh, I, I don't know if any of the panelists would like to have a word, a quick word, and then we'll move on to the next issue. Honorable uh, Yes, we really want to send our condolences to the family of uh, Henry Chamber. We do remember him as uh, one of the uh, serious and somebody that has contributed to the public service uh, of our country. And uh, one of other things is that uh, uh, a person that was able to document what he saw when he was still alive, uh, which has guided many of us to know what happened uh, when he was in office. And therefore, we want to uh, appreciate his contribution to the development of our country. Uh, Dr. Matembe, a quick word on uh, Henry Chamber. Yeah, of course, yeah, I'm, I'm very sad about that because I would call him This time. Mm, work and, uh, so we used to talk about and I think I also documented mine mm. so that when I'm gone they will know. 
very different experiences between. I don't know much about Chamber. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a Chris? I think I read this book. Is it State of Blood? A State of Blood, yes. Yeah. Mm. And what I commend him for is giving us the history as he saw it. And that book is... Uh, Enduring, it doesn't expire. I think the other book I read about politicians who write books that give you knowledge, and I think Dr. Matembe wrote, I think I was 204. I think I was in Bali, I was already here. She wrote about women. Mm. I forget the title of the book. You would read and see uh, the cause of women. Mm. Otherwise, most of us today, we are writing motivational books. Mm. You know, how I moved from no shoes to shoes. You know, how I overcame. Like those people who became very many in the country some time back. I started my farm with a, one egg. Then you don't see a connection. Mm. But for Musei Chamber, there is a book you can, even a child born 50 years from now, is able to look back in history and understand what happened. What, what happened. Mm. That's why I credit him for that. I wish many more leaders could do get into writing such books and not simply a celebration of being a pauper and now you have a mansion, then you turn it into a book and you make it look like it is something too serious. Well, it is important, but for the country, it is important to leave something that lives longer. Mm. Thank you. May the soul of uh, the Honorable Henry Chamber mm. rest in uh, eternal peace. Uh, just a quick comment from the panelists also about this incident on the 17th in uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park, uh, Katwe Kawatoro area uh, on the road when uh, the first images that came out were of that uh, tourist vehicle burning and then the body sprawled out um, on the road. And it's made even more difficult now uh, to comprehend because the tourists, a Briton and a South African, were newlyweds on honeymoon in Uganda. Uh, the president did issue a statement yesterday uh, to condole with the family and also indicate that um, everything is being done to deal with, and he used the word to wipe out uh, the perpetrators. The initial reports indicated that, I mean suggested from the police that they suspected this could have been uh, allied democratic forces rebels, but I have seen what appears to be a claim by another group, uh, the Islamic State. Uh, claiming that they're responsible for this attack. Let me start with the minister. Um, what does this mean? Because Uganda is struggling to attract tourists to come back uh, here after the COVID closure. Now, of all things, in a national park that has been largely peaceful in spite of its location, uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park, you have an incident like this. Yeah, first of all, I want to send my condolences to the family of the deceased. Uh, the couple and the Ugandan uh, who died. It is very unfortunate that it happened, but to really continue assuring 
the international community that uh, we are doing all that we can to ensure that we maintain the security of the country, including uh, protection of tourists, uh, protection of people who work in those centers, and also to, to say that uh, these things happen uh, in the way they happened, mm -hmm. but after they have happened, what is important now is to make sure that uh, there is an assurance that it does not reoccur. And that's what uh, the security forces, as His Excellency President said, um, are doing to ensure that those who did it uh, are found and brought to justice. Now, it doesn't matter who claims who did it, what was done was bad, mm. and uh, it is very hurting to our, our promotion of tourism in the country. It is very hurting to the family that lost their dear ones, uh, but we have all the uh, uh, assurance uh, to Ugandans and to international community that we are doing all we can, our security forces are doing all we can to ensure that those who did it are brought to justice and should never happen again. Okay, let, 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 me, let me jump to Tama Tebe briefly and go to Mwanga Chivombi uh, as, as a sitting member of parliament. Um, I, I wonder what your reading of this attack is in terms of um, how much it impacts the country? Of course, as you said earlier, we are recovering from post-COVID. And we, there is every need to attract as many tourists as possible because they bring in the, 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 the required resources that help our economy. And the tourist industry is one of those key sectors that bring in uh, the inflow, especially of foreign currencies and dollars. But then when you go to the broader issue of ADF, of insecurity, I mean, we've been at this forefront of fighting ADF, I think, for as long as I can remember. Mm. We've been promised the wipeout every now and then. At, at what time I was in Parliament, the then Minister of Security, um, um, our good friend, and uh, Mama and Baba's Patrick, said there were only three. And he said, you know, he's even where they are. So until then, we are still struggling. The, the, the Minister for Security made a statement before Parliament today. Of course, it was yes. as, as brief as usual mm. um, about yes, this incident. Yes, about, but what is very critical is that I think we must now urge government to look for ways and means of talking to ADF and stopping this carnage. The wiping out, we've lived with it for so long. It is only fair. I mean, America the other day was talking to the Taliban in Afghanistan. So the, the, we've got now to invent another way. Of course, who, who do you talk to in ADF? They, they don't have a clear leadership structure. No, they don't have it's, a location, it's a, a duty, clear location. It's a duty of our intelligence service to do that job. You and me don't have that knowledge. But there are men and women who pay dearly to go and dig out that detail and know who to talk to. It's, it's, it's horrible. For, I mean, it may look funny for me on the, after the, in the aftermath of, of this death, which we must condemn, but then for how long and how many, the other day they were in Kasese, they murdered people. We said ADF. So, and the president the other day was saying they have done good bombing in Koro. The, the other day I had in my constituency in Tafara, they were arresting people. There was a bomb scare, again attributed to ADF in Chibibi. So it, it's something we are now living with home, abroad, in the park, in everywhere. So we must find a solution. I think uh, gunpowder and men on boots on ground and planes have failed. Okay. And, and we must make this case to government that it is also heroic. Yeah, to we, go that we, route. We, we, we've seen, uh, I, I didn't want to stay, stay too long on this, but we've seen uh, Islamic State claim responsibility for this. Uh, that, that is 
something so if, not if, if it's if it's Islamic State then how do you initiate talks with ADF no what I'm saying even the Islamic State must have a, a representation in the in the UK. I don't think this is the Islamic State of of wherever they are that are doing this work so at the end of the day it's the duty of those that man our security to go to the top of the situation we are losing so many people spending a lot of resources and we simply can't afford it and we must urge government to go that route because this one of promising to wipe out we've had that every other day dr matembe a quick comment on uh, that incident well for me it was really ex extremely terrible as as a mother as a mother imagining my my son and or my daughter eh, going to a honeymoon and that is the end of their lives that's what killed my heart it was so sad and i really extend my sympathies to, to these parents and the way they died and when i saw the fire and i wondered if it is adf who is adf are they ugandans or they are not ugandans because if they were ugandans i wonder what what it it pays them when they destroy Uganda as a country. Because if you, that incident alone traveling all over the, the world, mm. you can imagine the damage now it has done on tourism industry. And, and you are doing that for your country, Uganda, mm. because you want to come in and rule. Actually, it sent me to thinking, who is ADF? Are they human beings? Because if you're a human being, really, you see these people, they are tourists, they are not part of the government that is disturbing you or anything. Poor young people, and you come and you burn the wife in the vehicle, and you, are you a human being? I, I just was saying, God, can't you release fire onto these people, wherever they are, because it is too much. First of all, they are not human beings. Second, if they are Ugandans, I think they should burn day in the bush because how can they be wanting to come over and take over a country which they don't love? Because if you do that kind of thing that shows that you, you hate the country and therefore you don't want it, you want it to, to come to a halt on economic development, then you, you don't like it. Now, on the part of, of the government, with the I have no comment, but as you know, I have no faith and no trust in this government. Mm. And this whole nonsense of always saying, yes, we shall arrest. Whom have they ever arrested? Even just people who shoot people. You remember our people who died just like that, just like that. Whom do they arrest and charge? And if they can't arrest those who are in Uganda here, <laughs> killing people and then they are in the in the in the bush where they are we are in control i want to agree with my colleague here that surely pride must stop somewhere you know when you are so proud of your military and your army and all you think about is we shall finish them we are strong in the army we are doing and yet the opposite is there and you being made into fun, it is just like they are shouting, we are going to deal with corruption. And in the end, they deal with nothing. Why don't they come down to humility? And you know, God hates the proud and gives grace to the humble. Thank there you. is a stage where you must reach and say, Konkaha, where things have reached. If mm. there are enemies, let us come together. Mm. Let's reason together and sort out the situation. Thank you. Chris, a quick comment on that incident, and especially on the communication part. Uh, a very quick statement came out from the police, and then uh, uh, people were beginning to question, saying, how did you know? How did you conclude so quickly? And that lies the problem sometimes. First of all, this incident, like all others have said, is very, very absurd for a country and an industry where we are just beginning to see its recovery. But then, when we are communicating, we should be aware that uh, Uganda does not only have one national park. I am very sure there were tourists at Kidepo, mm -hmm. and they are safe and secure, as we speak, under the same government, under the same security apparatus. I'm sure Machison Falls still has tourists who 
are also reading about this incident, wherever they are, and they are safe, meaning that these things happen. Mugahinga is there. So this has happened at Queen Elizabeth. Now the, the dilemma is why, like others are asking, why do you do it on a foreigner? Then there is something unbelievable in you. If the anger is with the government, what does it have to do with this Britain and, and South African? And even the Ugandans. And even the Ugandans. Not a mere driver. So, I mean a tour guide. so I think we need to send a message to the world that no, we regret this because nobody wants it. It's regrettable and fully irreversible. But does not mean Uganda is a no-go area. Not at all. That should be the messaging out. Unfortunately, people either, either deliberate or not choose to always see the bad side of their own selves. And we want others to see us that way. And let others have no business with us. If we don't get tourists, others will not lack water in their countries. We shall, it's us who lack. We will not have, we are the ones who will suffer budget shortfalls. So some, at a certain level, we need to be able to be aware to that fact. I agree, dialogue is very key in many of these uh, public affairs. There should be a time you need to talk, there is time you need to agree. But again, when you are talking, you need to understand the person you are talking to. What is the agenda of ADF? At least national, who knows it? So that we can put pressure on government that please talk to these guys. Mm. They have issues that they we... They have issues that need to be... That, that, that we, we, we agree with. But these fellows are... You don't seem to see the agenda. The next agenda, Kichwamba. The next thing you see, this school in Kases again. Mm. Now, if you really... Do we reward you for killing children? If there is government must talk, which is okay, but talk about what? And with who? So even the ADF should actually... Let them come out and have the agenda. Rather than saying it is us who have done it. You're hurting people. So if government must talk with such people, then it's going to be difficult for others to be. Are you rewarding them for having done what they have done? So even government has to be very cautious a bit. So I think at this point, the UPDF must make it risky, highly risky for whoever wants to do that. Now, if they have a political agenda, let it be known. Then we can put government under pressure that I think from the, the points they have, mm. go on a round table. For now, really, it is very fuzzy. It is about blood. It's about bombs. Really, when you begin talking like that, then there's a problem. Thank you. Mm. Let's return this discussion to the Parliament of the Republic of Uganda. On the front line tonight, we discuss what is it, the chaos that we see in Parliament? What does it mean? What is driving it? Is it un unique to the, the 11th Parliament? Have we seen incidents like this before? Le let me start with... Uh, the two-hour leader of opposition, member of parliament for Mutembala. <laughs> Your two hours themselves were quite dramatic uh, in themselves, and we see quite a lot of drama in parliament lately. Honorable Mwanga Chivombe, can you convince Ugandans that you guys are sitting in that parliament to discuss serious national issues that change uh, through the legislation that you make, through the policies that, you may, uh, that, that come out of that legislation, through the appropriation that you do, can actually have an impact on your voters in Mutambala, on his voters in Indorua. Exactly. When, when um, we see a lot of that drama every other day. First of all, I protest the word drama. There could be a lot of tension, and, um, and, and because this is a serious issue, the first task of any government is to protect property, people and their property. Now, in the last couple of, not even months, for as long as all of us can remember, we've been living, and for some time, because you have an episode of, of reasonableness in Uganda, you close your eye and say, okay, let's move. But for as long as there has been competitive politics in Uganda, there has been a trend where government of NRM and the security apparatus in this country descend on the people of Uganda, murder them, kill them in open daylight, humiliate them. If they are journalists, beat them up 
confiscate their property. We are not speaking about events that have happened just this, mm. this. You could say from Manene Road, for as long as it's Kalangal Action Plan, beat up people. It seems at every time Chiboko scored, beat up people. And these are state inspired violence. Then it's becoming trendy to kill a couple of Ugandans by state apparatus we'll come to that in a moment let's first go back one of your members the honorable francis zake was the subject of debate in parliament for remarks he apparently made about a colleague member of parliament juliet Sinyamatama, just the other day and we were watching and i mean ugandans are watching you and saying uh, are these people discussing the issues they should be discussing? Now, the Abdul Katun's committee on rules and privileges is going to spend more time, more taxpayers' money, investigating that incident. Let's start from there. We'll, we'll, we'll come to the statement of uh, the leader of opposition today in, in yeah. regard to uh, the disappearances. And, yeah, uh, the yeah, from yes, the, I, I just want to believe the one of Chinyamatama was a one of an aberration far away from the normal. And I think it was diversionary from serious issues that are affecting this country. And for us to even expound them much more on this platform, we are still being diversionary. And, and I do not really how, want how to spend a, long, a lot of, of this precious time yes. discussing a speech of one Zake somewhere in uh, Chotera. Rakai, mm. in, uh, in, in a constituency of Chinyamatama, it became an issue. That issue was brought when we, had, when we were seriously considering pertinent issues of human rights abuse with impunity. Therefore, I will be very hesitant to spend this precious time here, this late hour of the day, discussing the Chinyamatama issue. Mm. I will be honest with you. I will you spare me for this talk show, Abdul Katuntu can deal with this if he has time. If there are some Ugandans that want to spend time discussing this, I am not on their side. I want to spend this, this time here discussing serious issues. Mm. But uh, and, and, and Ugandans are demanding of you that you, dis you spend time in Parliament discussing serious issues. Yes, and I want and to dedicate this front line to discuss serious issues. If you want to discuss it in Yamatama, not with me. Honorable Bahati, let me, let, let me come to you. Yes. Yes. We, we saw a lot of uh, foot stamping, a lot of uh, excitement in Parliament over what many members of Parliament, not just Mwanga Chivombi say, mm. was an unserious issue that shouldn't be used to waste precious Parliament's time. And yeah, thank you very much, Charis. And uh, thank you, Honorable, for the comments that you have made. You see, Charis, what happens is that Parliament is a temple of democracy where we go to practice this system of governance, government of the people, for the people, and by the people. That's where we go. And as we do this, like any other place of worship, you have rules that govern. If you go to a mosque, there are steps and things that you do. If you go to a church, there is a way you conduct yourself. Even us in Parliament, we have rules of procedure. I actually came with a book, a whole book. We, we, we have the whole book mm. where we refer to. And these rules of procedure emanate from the Constitution. And they are approved by members of Parliament. All of us agree, and we vote on them and agree. And among the rules of procedure are ESCO issues. I'm very surprised, by the way, to hear that the Honorable Chivumbi is taking this matter just lightly lightly that a, a, a code of conduct of a member of parliament mm. is not an important issue to the country. That you can go to parliament and behave the way you want and that becomes a non-issue. It's an issue. The way a member of parliament behaves is of a concern for the people of Uganda. So we have rules. We have the way we dress. We have the way we talk. We have the way we, we, we raise our issues. So in this case, just a quick comment of uh, Juliet Nyamatama, mm. uh, Honorable Zake went to his constituents and abused him. And he says, uh, 
uh, that he was a prostitute. That's what he stated, mm. a member of parliament. Those are the words and, she said and she we couldn't have, get and out we have, and through we have, her mouth. A, we have a practice in, our, in parliament that if I'm going to honor Chivumbi's place, I inform him, and when I'm go, I go there, I cannot go to honor Chivumbi's constituency and start abusing him in that constituency. So honor Chinyamatama was concerned, and using the rules of procedure, he came and raised the matter. When he raised the matter, we put the question to order, whether, rather to, to, to the vote, mm -hmm. whether we should actually watch the film. And it was passed by the majority that we should watch what happened there. Mm. And we, we, we debated that. Some members started behaving the way uh, they, they behaved. So we have a duty as members of parliament to respect the rules of procedure. We have a duty as members of parliament to respect the speaker that we have elected ourselves. We have a duty to conduct ourselves in a manner that actually represents what we are as members of parliament to the people of Uganda. Ugandans are watching us. Ugandans are watching us. So one of the things that I want to... The majority really of the people who are rising up sorry. in that, uh, you, you're the chairman of the NRM in Kavale district, um, and you're a senior leader yes. within the party in parliament and in government. Much of the drama we saw was coming from the benches of the NRA members of parliament. Yes, we have. Especially the women members of parliament. Charles, what I'm saying is that we have a duty to keep this house decent. And one of the things that we, have, we had, we had a meeting with a, with a, a caucus meeting where even uh, I think uh, some of the members of the position were. Mm. We must keep this house decent. And one of the things that we are saying to all our colleagues is that heckling is not part of the distance that yes, we are so talking can, about. You, you and whether it comes from our side or the side of you, you, the... You can help our viewers understand mm. what many see as uh, not, you, you not living up to that duty, that mm. responsibility. Mm. Uh, very many people when we were preparing for this show, when we first discussed the topic earlier, they were saying, look, go back to 2017, the debate on lifting of the age limit, the fight in parliament, Many see uh, this as a kind of deterioration and you deviating, as members of parliament, not, not, not just you as an individual, deviating from or, 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 or reneging on that responsibility to keep the distance of the house and keep it focused on the issue. Yes, when these things happen, we deal with them. The mm. issue of Kinyamatama, when it came, we dealt with it. When the leader of opposition the other day also wanted to move and show the video of... Uh, of uh, Honorable Chagrani, mm. we also dealt with it. And the same way that the speaker held, uh, uh, dealt with this issue of Chinyamatama is the same way that he dealt with, with the Honorable Ch Chagrani. He said, let us put this matter to vote like we did with Julia Chiamatama, and we put it on vote, mm. and we dealt with this. I want to say that the, the, it is not going to be possible, and I, Honorable Chagrani knows, that the, the violence or the walkout of the minority will suppress the logic of the majority. It's not going to work. It doesn't work that way. But also it is important to note that while these things are happening, as, 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 as they're happening, there are also other work that we are doing as members of parliament. Mm. For example, we have passed a number of bills in the house. We have passed anti homosexuality bills, we have passed the oil bills, the oil bills that are now doing the uh, regulating the framework within the, the, the region, the Arbatide region, we have passed the, the competition bill, we have passed the budgets. So there are areas where all of us as members of parliament, we should know that we are really representing Ugandans. And there are those areas that we have agreed, and there are those areas that we have disagreed. For example, there are areas where Chivumbi has made some amendments. Uh, to, the, to the issues regarding the budget, and we have agreed. There are areas where we have disagreed. But this conduct of walking out, this conduct of saying if we, like now, we are coming to that issue of the lead of opposition mm. uh, today. We debated the matter. We have been handling issues of human rights. Uh, I, I can read you a number of uh, issues that we have handled with human rights. But when the speaker said, you know, uh, bring a statement to you, the Minister of Internal Affairs, in one, in, in one month. They, they walked out. 
Okay. So what, what does that mean? Chris, I, I'll keep you wait, waiting for just a little while. Let me, let me, let me get to Honorable uh, Dr. Matembe here. You sat in that parliament. You saw the debates. We didn't see during your time 